All right, in this video we're going to do some more Laplace transforms, and we're going to be using them to solve differential equations where the right-hand side function, or the forcing function, is piecewise defined. Uh, Left-hand side is still going to be uh, second-order linear constant coefficients. And an example is we have y double prime plus y equals this piecewise function that is negative 1 from 0 to pi over 4, cosine of 2t from pi over 4 to pi, and 1 greater than pi. The first thing we want to do is write this out in terms of those unit step functions. So we can think of f of t as being negative 1 plus cosine of 2t minus negative 1 times the unit step function that starts at pi over 4. So always think of these unit step functions as switches and they turn on once you hit that point and so before t gets to pi over 4 this isn't here you just have the negative 1. Once you get to pi over 4 this turns on and that negative 1 and that positive 1 cancel out and you're just left with cosine of 2t. So it does agree with that. So you always add on the new piece, for instance, 1, and then subtract the previous piece, in this case, cosine of 2t. And this is the step function that starts at pi. There we go. So we've got that, so we can write the differential equation all in one line, and let's go ahead and do that. We're going to take the Laplace transform of it next. When we take the Laplace transform on the left-hand side, we know that it's a linear operator, so it's going to apply to both the y double prime and the y separately. Think of it as distributing. And on the right hand side we'll see that same kind of linearity where it can distribute to the three pieces here. It's now too big, so we're going to do a second line. Now, to simplify the left-hand side, remember that the Laplace transform of y is just going to be big Y of s. And that's going to be our unknown in this equation, and we're going to turn this into an algebraic equation for big Y of s. So it's okay to have that. We're going to keep that there. Uh, what's cool about the Laplace transform is the derivatives of the Laplace transform of the derivatives can be related to this Laplace transform function without derivatives. And uh, there's a formula for the first and second derivative, and uh, we're just going to need the formula for the second derivative here, because the first derivative does not appear. And the formula is s squared times big Y of s minus Y prime of 0 minus s times Y of 0 where y prime of 0 and y of 0 are the initial conditions. Those are given at the beginning of the problem. Uh, y prime of 0 is 1, y of 0 is negative 1. So we can write this out replacing those with numbers 1 and negative 1. Um, but I'm just going to write that as a plus s. So that takes care of the left-hand side, 
and that's something we saw with the last methodology, how to deal with those. Um, but we can put it all together in one line. Let's do that real quick. And we can even factor the big Y of S. Okay, so that's good. Now what about the right-hand side? Now when you're taking the right-hand side, you've got Laplace transforms of little functions multiplied with these unit step functions. And you've seen in the book, in the vocabulary, that there's some weird stuff happening. When you have this unit step function inside the little argument of the Laplace transform, two things happen. One is that you get this exponential on the outside, and notice that the coefficient and then exponent a matches with the uh, place where the step function becomes active, like pi over 4 or pi from our previous examples. And Instead of taking the regular Laplace transform of the other piece, you have to first shift it. So you first shift it by that same amount, right, adding on A, and then take the Laplace transform. And it's going to be kind of weird going backwards, too. So be really careful with these. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, we don't have that happen with the Laplace transform in negative 1. Um, that's pretty easy to get. We'll do that in the next step. But we do have it with this. So let's take a look at this one. So we're going to get an exponential, and it's going to have a pi over 4 is like our a. So it'll be a pi over 4 times s. And then you still have to take the Laplace transform of cosine of not 2t, but 2t plus pi over 4. So everywhere you see t in the other one, you're replacing it with t plus pi over 4. Um, plus 1. Right? Minus a negative 1 is plus 1. You don't change that because there's no t there. So wherever you had a t, you have to replace it with t plus 4. Okay, that looks good. So now let's take the Laplace transform of that. And remember for Laplace transforms, we typically will look stuff up in tables and things and use properties. So um, the one property we can use here is the linearity. So we can distribute the Laplace transform to the cosine part and to the 1. The next thing that we can do here is to simplify this. If we distribute the 2 here, it's actually going to be 2t plus pi over 2. And there's a trig identity that says if you have cosine of theta plus pi over 2, you can relate that to sine of theta. So we're going to use that identity just to make this easier. And it's actually it's going to be a negative sign of 2t. So those trig functions are equivalent. Cosine of 2t plus pi over 2 and negative sine of 2t. All right, I think we're ready to use the table. So remember that
we have the table for Laplace transforms right under the reading assignment. And the Laplace transform of 1 is just 1 over s, so we can use that. And the Laplace transform of a sine, because the negative we can bring outside, um, sine of 2t will be 2 over s squared plus 4. Sorry, make that a little bigger. Sine of 2t would be 2 over s squared plus 4. So we're going to get there's a negative, and then it's 2 over s squared plus 4. And then the plus transform of 1 is 1 over s. So it looks like that. Okay. All right, we do do one more of these. We've got the Laplace transform of this piece. And that should be easy now that we've done the other one. Right? We know there's going to be an exponential, and it's going to correspond to where the step function starts, which this time is at pi. So negative pi s. And then you still need to take the Laplace transform, um, but you need to do it of the shifted version of this to t plus pi. can then distribute the Laplace transform to the 1 and to the cosine. You can distribute the 2 to the t and the pi. And there's an even easier to know identity, is that if you just add 2 pi to the argument, it actually doesn't change the value of the cosine, because it's 2 pi periodic. So cosine of theta plus 2 pi is the same as cosine of theta. And we can just get rid of that. Uh, we know the Laplace transforms of the first one is 1 over s. And cosine of 2t, that shows up in the table. Uh, cosine of 2t would be s over s squared plus 4. Uh, there was one remaining Laplace transform, and that was the L of negative 1. So some of them may not have uh, piecewise stuff, and so we do that in step 5. And this is just negative 1 over S. Right, if we put all this together, we get a nice equation for big Y of S. Or we had this part here. So our left-hand side. And then we've got the negative 1 over s. And then we've got the second part here. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? And then we've got... Are you there? Are you there? This.
like we did a little bit of a problem with pasting that in. Plus there. Right. So that is the finished differential equation. Once everything's been Laplace transformed and uh, everything's in terms of s and big Y of s. And you could solve this for big Y of s. You would just subtract the 1, the s, the other side, and then you can divide by the s squared plus 1. So what is this going to look like? Uh, if we add 1 to both sides, we'll get rid of that. And if we subtract s from both sides, we will get rid of that. All right. Finally, we will divide everything by s squared plus 1. And that's why we're going to need to deal with partial fraction decomposition. Because we will get an s squared plus 1 in these denominators. That's going right off the page there. So let me bring that to the next line. So have to divide these two terms by s squared plus 1. And that is the Laplace transform of y. So in order to get back to the solution, y of t, little y of t, we need to take the inverse Laplace transform. And therein lies the problem. Uh, we need these things to show up in the form where we can easily take the inverse Laplace transform. Um, and some of these are, are kind of complicated rational functions. Um, so what we're looking for is things that match up as just 1 over s minus a number, um, a number over s squared plus a number, uh, s over s squared plus a number, things like that. Alright, um, so the first one we're going to do is this one. And uh, we know that we can break that up into something over s and something over s squared plus 1. And you can go ahead and multiply through by denominators, common denominator, and you can turn this into the equation 1 equals a times s squared plus 1 plus, well, 
since this is a quadratic, we need a BS plus C. We get that. And we can actually figure out what A, B, and C are from this. Uh, it's easier if we sort of distribute it out. So let's distribute this. And you need things to match up on both sides um, in terms of like terms. And if you notice, the left side is just a constant, and the right side, the only constant is a. And this tells you that a has to equal 1. Right? So we know that a is going to be 1. Furthermore, when you look at the s squared terms, the quadratic terms, there's nothing on the left. So that's 0. 0 has to equal a plus b. So matching up those s squared terms, you see that a plus b have to equal 0. So a and b are opposites. So b is negative 1. The last thing to notice is the linear terms. There's only one on the right. And there's no regular s anywhere else. So the only way that would work is if c was 0. So this tells us how to decompose this thing. Right, a is going to be 1, b is going to be negative 1, and c is going to be 0. So we get that decomposition there. Let's go ahead and write it as negative there. Right, that's good. Uh, we've got a couple more that are pretty straightforward. Right, so with this one, we got 2 over s squared plus 4 times s squared plus 1. And uh, we're going to break that up into uh, a s plus b over the s squared plus 4 plus c s plus d over the s squared plus 1. And multiplying by the denominators, we can get the equation 2 equals a s plus b is s squared plus 1 plus c s plus d times s squared plus 4. And we'll go ahead and distribute. So we get as cubed plus as plus bs squared plus b. And foil the second part, you get c s cubed plus 4cs plus d. 
d s squared plus 4 d. All right, and so we're going to get some um, equations based on this. Uh, if we set up the like terms for, say, s cubed, there's nothing on the left. And we've got a plus c. So this tells us a and c are opposites. For s squared, We've got b plus d equals 0. So b and d are opposites. If we just look at the s terms, we've got a plus 4c. Again, that's equal to 0. There's nothing on the left. And if we just look at the constants, we've got a 2 equal to b plus 4d. And what this gives you is systems of equations for a and c and for b and d. Um, you can kind of shuffle the order on these. And if you think about solving the first two equations of the system, uh, you can just subtract them and uh, you'll see that it'll tell you that c is 0 and that means that a is also 0. So um, putting those together we see that a equals c equals 0. Now if we solve the last two equations by again subtracting, subtract the bottom from the top, uh, you'll get 2 equals 3d. And so that'll tell you what d is. Um, if 2 equals 3d, then d equals 2 thirds. And that, of course, tells you that b is negative 2 thirds. So you can. Figure this out if a and c zero, then you'll just get a two thirds here. The negative there. And c is zero, we'll get a two thirds there. So there is one last one to take care of, and that's this one. And I'm just going to let you do that on your own. I'll give you the answer. You can check. Uh, it's very similar to this one. Uh, so the denominators are the same, s squared plus 4 and s squared plus 1, um, but we actually get negative s over 3 and s over 3. So it's uh, a is negative one third and c is one third. b and d would be a zero. All right, uh, at this point you could take the inverse Laplace transform of all the parts um, because we break everything up and um, let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we get to is this. Now we broke that up into a 1 over s and an s over s squared plus 1. Uh, and there's a negative there. 
So it's actually negative there, positive here. Um, and that will actually cancel out with this. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that piece out, put it here on the end. And show that that happens. So we've got That partial fraction decomposition of that one part gives us that, and you'll notice that that's going to get rid of these two terms. The negative s over s squared plus 1 and the positive s over s squared plus 1. Those will go away. So the first thing we'll actually get to is these this exponential here. And uh, there's a rule for that. So if you have the inverse Laplace transform of an exponential times the Laplace transform of a function, um, you can bring that exponential back as a unit step function, where the coefficient of the exponent matches with where that unit step function turns on. And you can then take the inverse transform of the function, and after you take the inverse transform, you can shift backwards. So it's sort of the opposite of what we just did earlier with the unit step functions. So I'm going to write out, it's going to be kind of long, we're going to have a t minus pi over 4 right that's this part of the formula and then we need to have the inverse transform of this part. And this is where we need to use our uh, partial fraction decompositions. So we had the decomposition of this one and of this one already. So we'll just write in what those are. There's the one the first fraction. And that negative sign is going to put the signs on these two. Right, it's the negative sign there. And uh, this one we had earlier as well. And we're actually able to take the Laplace transform of each of these pieces. Uh, the number over s squared plus 4, the 2 over s squared plus 4, is going to show up in the table. That's a sine, right? 2 over s squared plus 4 would be sine of 2t. And the 1 over s goes to a 1. And the s over s squared plus 1 goes to a cosine.
Now remember, we do need to, once we take these inverse transforms, to then subtract pi over 4 from each of them. So here goes. All right, so the inverse transform of that part, you do have the one third, right? Because that three in the denominator isn't really accounted for by anything in the table. And then you have a sine of two t normally. All right, we talked about 2 over s squared plus 4 being sine of 2t. But by this formula, you have to shift t minus a afterwards. So we're now going to replace t with t minus pi over 4. And then we do something similar for the other ones. So we've got... another sine function here, this time it's just sine of t, and there's a two-thirds. Right, so we're going to basically put the two-thirds in front, and then this is 1 over s squared plus 1, which would go along with omega being 1 and giving you sine of t. But we replace it with t minus pi over 4. Uh, inverse transform of 1 over s is 1. And the inverse transform of s over s squared plus 1 is cosine of t. But we do t minus pi over 4. And that's all times that unit step function. All right, so that takes care of the Laplace transform of that first part. Um, which is half of the, the hard part. We now want to do the Laplace transform of the second part. This is going to come out with a unit step function that is t minus pi. And then we need the inverse transform of this stuff. Again, we're going to use some partial fraction decompositions to make sure this all works out. Uh, we have the decomposition for 1 over s times s squared plus 1 and for the other one. So let's just replace those. There's 1 over s times s squared plus 1. And then s over s squared plus 4, s squared plus 1 is the one that I didn't do. I just wrote the answer for. And there's going to be a negative in front of the whole thing, so I'll have to flip the signs on these. So it's going to be minus there, and these negatives will cancel out. And it'll look like that. Alright, so we can go in and take the inverse transform of these one by one. Uh, inverse transform of 1 over s is just 1. Remember, you don't need to subtract pi for ones that don't have the variable. Only when t would appear do you subtract the pi. Uh, s over s squared plus 1 is cosine of t. But we do t minus pi. 
And then we have one third s over s squared plus four. And uh, s over s squared plus four is cosine of two t. But we replace t with t minus pi. And last but not least, we have a one-third here. And s over s squared plus 1 is cosine of t. So we do cosine of t minus pi. All right. Um, there's a little plus transform of the last little bit or inverse transform of these two. And those show up in the table. Uh, we've got 1 over s squared plus 1 is sine. And we don't need to subtract anything from the t because there's no unit step function attached to these. Uh, and then the inverse transform of 1 over s is just the 1. So we get that. All right, so we're going to put all this together for our solution. Y of t. Uh, it's going to have the sine of t minus 1 plus this part with the unit step function at pi over 4. plus this part with the unit step function at pi. Now you can put this back in piecewise form for your final answer. Uh, we know that the sine of t minus 1 is the part that has no piecewise affiliation, so that's going to be there the whole time. And then to make sure that these other ones work out, you need to include the sine of t minus 1, and then you need to add on whatever else is there. Right? Because when, when once t is between pi over 4 and pi, then you have the first two lines. Um, now the 1s do cancel. There's a minus 1 and a positive 1. So we can uh, simplify that. And there might be other simplifications. And then the final step is to include everything. And this just gets to be pretty long. Um, we could take what we had here, and I'm sure it would simplify if you use some trig identities. And then add on this extra part. We see the benefit of using the uh, step function notation. So that's, that's all going to be there. And uh, yeah, I think you can do some, definitely do some simplifying. Like for instance, here, if you distribute this to, it's 2t minus 2 pi. And subtracting 2 pi doesn't do anything. So you can go just to 2t. And cosine of t minus pi is somehow related to sine. And these are, there's a sine of 2t minus pi over 2 here. And you can probably relate that to a cosine. And so there's probably some way to combine these 
more effectively. But we have all the pieces there, and that is the complete process. So that is all you should need. Yeah.